There's a lot of songs that kind of tie right in together here. Um, purposeful just to do it or, you know. All of them tying together? With some of them. There's a lot that, that tie together here. So is that something just kind of, you know, you're like, I wanted to do this because it's telling a story or it's just it was a good transition? I think that comes hand in hand in a couple ways. Like it started out as like a big idea, but now it's like I've started it. I've created the first half almost. Welcome to Progress. Intro. What is the message you're trying to send with the intro track? Ooh, okay. Um, so there's only a couple words in that, and I don't even know if it started with a message because Welcome to Progress is just I Hate Heartache Backwards, which is the last song of pain, and it runs immediately into just the reverse sound. Can I just like pull it up while we're doing this? Is that a thing that we can do? This is I Hate Heartache. backwards the lead sounds come back in and then in the middle of I hit heartache there's a clip reverse that sounds just by accident like Lord have mercy on me and it's just me singing oh I hate heartache um, but listening back in reverse I was like that's crazy like that sounds almost identical I showed my brother we had this weird like oh moment and I pulled some harmonies on top that are me saying Lord have mercy on me. So I guess the message for that track would be this isn't just progress on the side of everything gets better. It's more of the side of you kind of have to drop to your knees and have that breakdown moment to get to progress. Thank you. Yeah, okay. So it's just me singing I Hate Heartache. Reverse, it sounds like, Lord, have mercy down on me. I know you're with me. But this was never really, when I first started, I was never thinking this would be anything really spiritual or about my faith or anything like that. It just, as I was making it, it became that very quickly. So for this to be an intro song that was just kind of winged was very like enjoyable for me to just kind of come out with it starting you into the mentality of like, this is gonna talk about some stuff you might not talk about daily. Fire. F-I-R-E, spaces on, in between. Fire. Temperatures go from 102, 103, 104, like, is there is there any like symbolism to that or anything? Was that planned that's, out or did you just go and do some math? That's kind of enjoyable that that would even be a thought because that was winging it, that was luck. Like it started with 102, writing this song, I think I wrote this song six years ago, five years ago. This is one of the oldest Ben Becker songs to date, okay? It was probably four different demos. Um, where I'm sitting in the studio at one point telling them this is what I want and they get done with recording and I leave and I'm like that's not what I wanted but parts of it are what I want. There's certain parts where I'm like I was in my buddy's um, house who's just letting me stay, David Cleveland, shout out to you, and I woke up the next morning with this song and the first line of that pre-chorus I think like 102 is where it starts, but as my pre-chorus went on, I wanted it to grow in the intensity of a relationship or something like that. So no technical behind the scenes meaning of the numbers, but if you had to like dig for it, I'd say the meaning was just that I didn't want it to be a boring pre-chorus over and over and over. Get moving when it comes to this song, is it kind of something like uplifting about, you know, getting going and just kind of get out there and do some stuff? I don't know, dude. Okay, Get Moving was my take on a flex song. Like everybody's songs are like, I got these cars, I got this money, 
I got all these things. And I think the original lines to the song was, I got paper flowing right out of my pockets. And all of these things were more materialistic when I started them. But I don't want to be that. I love those songs and the, like the energy that comes with them. But I didn't want to be forcing that with lyrics that I didn't really care about. So I tried to change it to blessings. I've got blessings flowing out of my pockets. I got angels all around. And it's more of that like, you can't touch me type of mentality, but not because of all this money stuff I got going, more of a mentality. On the side of lyrics, I wanted to put as many fun things in as possible while still keeping it like, oh, this is a hard song. You know what I mean? Like there's King Julian in it. I feel like King Julian, how you should move it. There's goofy things that are Ben Becker and the way I would talk to someone conversationally. But in the aspect of what does it mean? I don't think it means anything other than just like, I'm confident. I'm confident in what I can do. And I wanted that to be what people are singing in their cars. You know what I mean? Love it on lockdown. <laughs> All right. Was this song inspired by, you know, current pandemic events and everything going on or is it is it entirely something different dude okay there's a bunch of different things i guess that added on to this i love love songs i love romantic songs um i wanted to make a sexy song that wasn't just like sex and that was the beginning of it and then it was like what am i writing about i'm in a pandemic i'm locked down so it did come from that but it wasn't just on the side of like pandemic lockdowns because the the first verse um, was just what I would do on a date. I would legitimately rather cook for someone and have someone over and just be in a zone where we're comfortable than take them out and spend a bunch of money and make them think that that's like my way of showing them I care. So it starts out with like, coming in girl, I'll be chefing, just a kitchen for two and stuff like that. Um, but it does turn into the pandemic side of like, we are locked down. I've got your love and on lock now, and I never want to stop now. Just a little love and on lock down. So it's saying like, you can make the best out of a situation even if you're in, you know, a pandemic or even if you're in a snowed out like situation. The second verse and a lot of the song comes from like, I, I'm not big on Tinder, not big on Tinder at all, but I actually matched with this girl while I broke my leg and she came over for Valentine's Day just thinking like we would hang out and talk for a while and the snow hit and we were locked in the same house for four days, four days straight and genuinely had a blast. Like it was a great time. Um, and so that kind of plays into it too. It's just the feeling of like, if you don't have anywhere to be, but you're with someone, you can have an amazing time. Um, and I wanted to mix that with the feel good R&B, sexy, like moody vibes too, so. What a wonderful time to be alive, stripped. Sarcastic, indeed. So here's one of the, the verses here, and I kind of want you to explain this. So, um, we're all slaves to a blank white screen, and we don't feel nothing unless we show something. Like, can you just kind of explain that, what your thought process and what you actually mean by that? I want to say that pre-chorus was the beginning of me trying to make it more of a universal issue of like our time to be alive. Um, but basically when I hear that, I see just all of us staring at our phones, s just sitting, scrolling on Instagram, thinking about the people who have more or scrolling through our pictures, seeing how we can show someone we have more than them. I think the original line was we, in reality, we don't have nothing but I changed it um, just right before I put out the album to, we're all slaves to a blank white screen. We don't feel nothing unless we show off something in eternity, you can't bring nothing. Because we find it so fun to run around with all of these objects and all of these things that make us feel cool. But the moment we disappear on this earth, it stays, we're not here. Um, and that's kind of just the feeling that I feel like people ignore it because they're so scared of that point in their life. But you really got to find some things in here and in here that are going to 
take away that numbness, that blank white screen. Um, and that's like the simplest way I could explain it, even though it's been like five minutes of explanation. <laughs> but that's good. I feel like that's that's the best I could explain it. Hypocrite. Uh, is there any reason this song ends with a bit of the beginning of prayer after, or to start? So yes. Um, Storyline, I wanted this to be like a walkthrough of kind of my latest spiritual journey because I feel like everybody's having one every day. Um, but I wanted it to be a walkthrough of like you get to that lowest point of realizing the issues like you might have. Um, and that's where that dark point kind of walks right into where do you turn, you know what I mean? And I wanted to be able to say something of where you turn without saying this is it and you have to repent and get on your knees and do all these things because it's not what it's about you should just be able to pray and ask for help and ask for forgiveness and ask these things of you know god so it's definitely on purpose that that comes right after hypocrite i needed it to also not be dark after that hypocrite was the probably the darkest one that i put out in that album at least um so I didn't want it to just be sad, it's progress. And I did want it to be the beginning of my happier songs. Uh, so I just, there were so many things that went into it where I was like, this has to go here. But I wanted that to kind of be the big turnaround of like, no, it's not gonna be sad the whole time. Not just in the album, but in life. Like there's a point where it feels like it's just dark and it's gonna get better. Um, so in album, yes, and in life, yes. <laughs> Who told you prayer? Just let, give me the meaning to like the way that the song is like written out because it's like okay. question mark slash. Oh, the name, slash, the name. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the name of it. So that was half and half of just wanting a cool name in the first place. I wanted this album to have things that made you kind of want to click on the songs, whether or not you cared. But for that one, I tried to give some hidden meaning in that. I think prayer in a lot of people's minds is very ask a question, don't get an answer. Um, and instead of putting prayer as the name, even though that really is the name of the song, um, or at least the name, the hook of the chorus, which would usually be the name of a song, I wanted it to be like the answer is the first thing you get. And so who told you is kind of my impression of what God would tell you. Prayer is kind of God talking to me and talking to the listener of like, who told you this was how you had to do it? Who told you this was how you had to live? Who told you this was like what you had to do to be accepted into society and into the kingdom of God, all these things. But in general, I wanted it to be like God talking to us, just being like, where did you get this about like what kind of father I am? Um, so with prayer being what we're supposed to do, I wanted who told you to be his answer, but it not be just right in front of you where it's literally him saying, who told you I am the king and I am wondering what you were thinking. He, he's never going to talk to us like that. It, it's literally like like a whisper as many people will say but like in my opinion it's more of a when i'm talking to god in my head or about things i immediately get this like moral conviction if i'm saying like god i need your help being a better person i feel this like why do i need someone else's help to be better i think that is the whisper that is the the thing that you have to really look for and it's never right in front of your eyes so who told you with all these things in between is my visual image of having to look through all the BS in your head to see the answer. Letting go, it's fairly simple here. Um, describe what this song means to you, because I feel like this song is just like so personal. Yeah, I like that that's the first one that's just like, what does this mean to you specifically? Um, I think this is the first song I ever wrote to God, like rather than like, making up a story or talking to someone I loved or didn't love or didn't get love from. It was me 
talking about myself to someone who you can never truly confirm is listening. You know what I mean? So it was a very like deep, dark, open heart type of situation, but um, it ended up meaning so many different things after writing it. Like the, the track that's used is the original demo, the first recording I ever did of it. And it was four years ago. And it, I was not good at producing, especially real instruments like guitars and stuff like that. So I don't know, to be here and to listen to it now and it have been the exact song I made meant so much. It was like, that one was just pure from the start, you know what I mean? But all I did was add harmonies on top of the original wave of the track. Um, other than that, it really just meant in the album and in the spectrum of, you know, all 11 songs, it goes hypocrite, prayer, letting go. And it's the sense of you're talking to yourself first and kind of talking to God, like, do you see me how I see you? Um, then you go into the side of God talking to you and he's almost like, what are you doing? Like, why are you saying these things? And right after that is the introspective prayer. You go from God saying, say a prayer to saying the actual prayer, which is I'm letting go. But for me, short answer, it's about letting go of control, stopping the whole, I have to hold on to all these things in my life that are going to change in a week. Um, and just saying, I don't know where my life's taking me. I don't know where you're taking me, but I know that I need to just trust you. And that's what letting go is. Can I love you right cause you go left every time? Can I hold you just for one night? Can I stay Can I? Right by your side? It features Sunny on it. Sunny J sixteen, I think, on TikTok. Awesome. <laughs> and uh, it really feels like you two are singing an argument back and forth to each other, like about your feelings. So can you just kind of express a little bit, like the tone of the song and like what the song's message about and like what it's what's really going on in there? The best way to explain it is I just wanted a fight song and needed someone with like a really pretty voice to jump on it. Um, I was originally gonna let Sunny or Jaden um, write her verse, but we ended up after a couple of days, I was I offered and I was like, you know, I can do it if you want. And she's like, yeah, cool. So um, I wrote both verses and it helped me to just paint the scene of the argument that the person would say to me, like what I would expect the answer to be to my fir first verse. So if you think of the first verse as my verse and me saying we used to fight until the fighting turned to kissing on the table, it like. The first line is showing the toxicity of this relationship. It's like they're finding this lust and this love out of their fights and their issues. The moment that they're angry is when that passion almost comes back. When in reality, these verses and the things they're doing to each other are what's pulling them apart. So when her verse comes around, it's just her immediate answer to basically my, my verse. Her, her argument right past of me saying, the tables have turned and you're cold and all these things. I want you back in my arms. She says, you act like everything you do is harmless. I've been screaming my feelings and you don't feel them regardless or you don't hear me regardless. The thought press, I always get like um, really in my head about not listening because I try to twist a sentence that someone else is saying into a way that my brain would process it and by accident, I'll cut people off. Um, so it sounds like I'm just not listening, but I'm actually trying to listen intently. Um, so in that, I was trying to just be a real person talking to me and saying like, you're not listening, which isn't true. So in reality, you're just getting into this bigger fight about just a misunderstanding, honestly. So that's can I, it's just a misunderstanding to people who love each other and can't figure it out because they can't find the true issue. I'll take the bangers and always shake it. Um, before we start this one, because I never know, how do you say this song? Two acts? Oh, <laughs> two acts? <laughs> no, that's staying in, bro, that's staying in. So. Pain has a song called To CJG in it. And it was a song to my childhood best friend, Jansen. Um, it was 
originally just a song I wrote to him and then it became something I wanted him to know was for him. And for a while, like, honestly, the song really shaped a lot of his longing to change, but life just kind of comes back to you and things don't ever work out the way you expect. So I get to progress and I have this one song that I had written to an ex-girlfriend and was going to just toss it up as shaping me. But I was like, no, like, put this out as a two. So this is two AKS. And it is legitimately just a thank you to someone who, you know, shaped a large portion of my life, but is completely gone from it now. And it's like kind of a, I'm not a grudge person. I don't like holding grudges. I've never really been able to hold a grudge for more than like 30 minutes. And then I accidentally laugh at something or, do something stupid and it's over but um that was the only breakup that i had a grudge i had someone who i just had it out for had something against because they had hurt me and it was like no it's the pain that makes you a better person it's the pain that shapes you i'll take the pain because i know it's shaping me so that song was written four years ago or something right after a breakup and I wanted that person to know, like, thanks. Thanks for breaking my heart. If you didn't, he couldn't have made me better. He couldn't have put me back together. So that's just a thank you. All right, last song here. The final. Better's good for me. Better's good for me. It definitely is just so much in here. So. <laughs> Verse one or verse two? Probably in two. Let me just let me read that. Yeah, that makes so okay, as yeah. if I'm not gonna know. <laughs> I wonder if I can even recognize the person looking my direction. Looking up his own reflection, it feels like I don't know him. What if I just told him right now? I'm not gonna let myself find out. I've been in a war with the answers, saying ignorance can't hurt. Dude, the fact that you heard I've been in a war with the answers, I wish that was the lyrics. That's so deep! Oh my gosh! Oh wow! Okay. So, so this is the ex only one you did to send me the lyrics all the Oh, time. that's my <laughs> fault! That's my fault! Okay, okay, okay. So good job though, that's I think 95%. So I'll start from that pre-chorus. The person look in my direction, get up his own reflection. It feels like I still know him. What if I just told him? Right now, I'm not going to let myself find out I've been the one with the answers saying ignorance can't hurt. So it's basically the thought process of like being safe, feeling okay, but not really feeling mentally there is like so common where you're like not doing anything that should be bringing you down. You feel like as a human being, you're killing it in society or killing it on these aspects. But in your head, you're just sad or you're just like anxious or something there's a feeling you can't explain for that it's kind of the first look in the mirror genuinely and saying like i don't recognize myself like i don't like this person i'm seeing or something like that and realizing that you have it in you to tell that person that where you are right now doesn't have to be where you are for the rest of your life so um that pre-chorus actually changes next pre-chorus to the person look in my directions making friends with his own reflection i finally got to know him um ever since i told him and it goes into the chorus so it's that first half of cam's verse where we're at that low it's like i don't feel good and then it says i don't recognize myself into what you want to tell that person verse two is kind of a leap in the future of you really getting that new hop in your step by step um, making progress and by the time you get to that pre-chorus, you're almost looking at a new person, but it's not someone you hate. It's someone that's like trying. And so we basically wanted it to just be a song that doesn't have a happy ending. Really, it's not one of those, I, try I was sad and then I tried to not be sad and now I'm not sad. It's like, I'm not feeling good, but I'm feeling better than I was. And that is good enough. Um, so for me, that was that was just a cool song. And for Cam and I, it was very fun to get that. But that's been universally like the most popular song, I guess, of ours. But more on the side of just knowing people hear it and it means something to them. Like, hits me in the freaking chest, if I'm being completely honest. 
because that was just us being sad boys you know what i mean and now it's like we listen to that with happiness so that's the answer to that but this is the perfect little closing okay progress was an album that was created after this song was made but the concept for making progress an album was years ago when i started paying so making progress being my first verse of that song and being the last song in progress the album was enough to just be cool but i wrote that song before i broke my ankle and the line is making progress new hop in my step by step and i am literally hopping around every second that i walk so to know that full circle looking back on it the progress I've made hasn't just been mentally, it's genuinely having a new hop in my step by step. Like, that's meant so much to me to be able to look back and see progress while I'm making progress. I'm not like sad after making the album. I feel like I've made progress and progress is out. Progress part one is out. Progress part two, I guess you guys just don't get to know when that comes out. <laughs> When you haven't even seen a clip yet and you know it's turning out well, I'd say that's a success. The only shout out I haven't done yet. Howie G! Oh, behind the camera! Working his ass off, going ham, he got smoke, he got lights, he got cameras. What are we doing? Action. We're doing action. <laughs>